box and we will try to answer all uh, all your questions so basically what you will be uh, what you will be seeing is uh, numbers and statistics uh, and insights done by Unilever global team and the research partners uh, for local data for la the last two months is uh, July and August so uh, starting with the topics uh, number one is the latest diner uh, insights post reopening. So basically, this is because of uh, after the pandemic and after the lockdown, we we've asked a lot of uh, we've we've asked a lot of customers or consumers outside. So we saw we we wanted to to know what's happening uh, out there and what 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 to do for for the next uh, next stage or next after the the pandemic. Number two is the diner expectation for safe uh, dining out, which is uh, what the consumer are expecting from uh, the business or from the from the restaurants to do so they can feel safe and comfortable when they want to dine out and definitely number three the actions to take as businesses to meet the diner safety needs so these are the three topics please feel free to drop uh, your questions uh, whenever you feel you want to ask something now the key insights starting with out of uh, out of home uh, recovery so basically, uh, those are the five uh, points. Uh, first of all, first one is spending time with friends and family is a key driver, as you can see. Uh, why? Because definitely uh, for the last six months, uh, six, seven months, uh, we've been sitting at home. And the reason, the reason we wanted to go out is to see our friends and family. And definitely it helps the, to pick. Uh, convenience is a key factor. And uh, because we are, we, we've spent a lot of time at home, and then we wanted something, someone to serve us or to cook for us. So it helped also the recovery for, for the businesses. So consumers went out and uh, say they start to dine out. Uh, dinner is the most popular, uh, which is uh, after the working hours. So dinner is like the uh, most, most popular, following for brunches during the weekend if they want to go out. So brunches also uh, is uh, top, uh, top things. Uh, chains and fast food are leading the out of home recovery, which is uh, what I mean from by chains uh, are leading. It's are the big name because we miss uh, we miss the we are loyal customers for for a couple of uh, of restaurants or big chains or big names out there so definitely after all the after the lockdown and the, and and what what was happening so we wanted to go there again and maybe to work start working there we used to go like two or three times per week but now after they opened that's one of the reasons that the chains or the big names we miss it so we we, we went out and uh, and visited them uh, mr abdul rashid do you want to add for out of home recovery Thing. Yeah, sure. Um, what, what we are seeing in the last uh, maybe uh, a month, two months is that uh, as the pandemic uh, has eased off slightly in terms of the, uh, the number of uh, positive tests, uh, people have become a bit more confident in, in venturing out of their homes and, and going to restaurants, where in the past they have relied mainly on the uh, home deliveries. So um, people are are trying to become social again. And one of the common meeting places to become social is, is, is a restaurant uh, where they're dining and talking to yeah, friends exactly. and maybe also having some business conversations. So all of these things are now uh, slowly coming back to normality again. Perfect, yes. So what about the delivery and takeaway? So again, as you can see, uh, chains lead again the, for most popular delivery. And this is because we go when we when consumer or try to order uh, delivery. Uh, so they go for trusted brands. So that's why the chains uh, are uh, still leading. 86% uh, of the occasions are for the delivery. And uh, this is because some of the consumers, they still don't want to go out. So that's why we see the number of uh, the delivery is still high. Uh, dinner accounts, definitely dinner accounts is, uh, is over half of the occasions. And this is because if uh, someone is at, at, at work during the day or they, they cooked at during the day at home, they want to relax at night and order and order food. So, and the, the key takeout from, the, from all this is business should focus on dinner menus. So basically when we want to develop our menus again or to look uh, for restaurants for our restaurant or for the delivery in store on or for social media, so I think we should look into the dinner menus again and make it more exciting to a customer. What do you think about the, the, this one, Mr. Abdul? Yeah, I think, yes, this is again, reinforcing what I said earlier. People want to get together and, and have a meal, uh, whether it is a family uh, with children and parents or whether it is with friends uh, sitting in the house. Uh, people tend to choose uh, the, 
the well-known reputed brands from where they order the yes, products exactly. so they can have some sort of a assurance that the product is going to be safe and good quality. And that uh, that is probably the time of the evening where they want to sit down and eat. And that's the, the dinner menu has to be providing a good variety of different options of foods for, for the family or for friends. Exactly. So I think this is the, the key take takeout here. It's really important to look into the dinner menus again and make it uh, even uh, new or exciting. Uh, going forward, I think uh, we've went out again. We've asked a lot of consumers what do they miss exactly when it comes to if they want to dine out or to order delivery. But I would say here for dine out more, uh, pizza and burgers uh, are still leading. Hence, they can order the pizza and burger at home, but, uh, but they, I think they missed to see it being done in front of them, being uh, served fresh on their tables. Uh, same goes for the burger, steaks as well, because we, they cannot uh, cook the steak as uh, like the restaurant they do on a special grill or machine. So definitely they miss uh, their steak outside to eat it outside. Desserts are being missed as well a lot. And this is because we cannot uh, do all the type of the desserts at home. So definitely uh, people are still uh, craving to go out and order their desserts. And uh, things like shawarma and steaks and the French fries and crispy chicken. So things that uh, are not easy to, to be done at home. Or if they order a delivery, it doesn't come as fresh as it is being served uh, on table. So I think these are like good numbers as you can see. Uh, now, all those insights and all those numbers, diner expect something uh, from, the, from the restaurant or from the business. So th there are like top requirements to feel comfortable at the venue, right? So as you can see all the numbers in here, all the, those points, this is what the consumers are saying or are asking. So 60% of them, they want to see the stuff wearing masks and gloves. And, uh, and this is normal. And 49%, they said that distance among stable. And uh, one, as you can see in the photo now, the restaurant, they start to add separators in between the tables. And I think because this is because First of all, they want to give the customer the feel of, uh, of uh, the distance, the social distancing while dining in. And the plus, I think also the business want, uh, they don't want to lose space and lose, uh, lose money in return if they want to remove tables and then like uh, they need to have two meters in, in, between, in between tables. What do you think, Mr. Abdul Rashid, right? So I think this will help a lot if they put separators. Yes, yeah, certainly the separators provide a barrier for, for the transfer of any microbes, including the, the COVID virus as well. Um, I, again, I think it depends on the, from the customer's perspective, they want to be, make sure that they are safe and secure. Uh, at the same time, they may want to enjoy the ambience and the atmosphere of the restaurant operation as well, uh, the dining area. So I think where you have a challenge in, 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 uh, meeting the space requirements, then the separators would be the best option and, and provide exactly. you with that additional space. However, sometimes in a large restaurant where they do have a sufficient space, then the distancing without the separators may maybe a bit more uh, providing an, an ambience and an atmosphere which is more True. positive uh, from a restaurant perspective, uh, sorry, from a mm -hmm. diner's perspective. So yes, I think in both cases, the safety is paramount. Uh, so whether it's a small dining area which has to have separators, or whether you have a larger area which you are able to uh, have social distancing, then tables, yeah. at the end of the day, the bottom line is safety has to be implemented. Exactly. Uh, body temperature checks for everyone, 26%. Uh, so this is happening. Actually, th all, those, uh, all those points are happening right now, but still the consumers, they are like pointing again and again because they want to see it. Uh, stuff check for viruses. Uh, I'm not sure maybe Mr. Abdul Rashid here uh, can help us uh, are the restaurants doing, doing check, uh, are they checking their stuff for viruses and for the COVID or it's not happening? Yeah, before I answer that particular point, I just want to go back to, to David, just to the, the two mentioned earlier on, um, staff wearing sure. masks and gloves. Um, what, what we are seeing here is the statistics from the customer's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. But if you look at the regulatory requirements, what you would expect would be see 100% of the staff wearing masks and gloves, uh, particularly with regards to the waiting staff, where in the past, perhaps the waiting staffs would not wear gloves. But mm. nowadays, with the COVID uh, requirements, the regulatory requirements specify that the masks and gloves must be worn. So from the perspective of safety, that would be 100% expectations from regulatory authorities. And again, for the body temperature, 
the 26 percent that you have mentioned there in the slide of course is the customer perspective or the guest perspective but from the perspective of the regulatory authorities that is 100 percent so as 100%. soon as the customer or guest walks into the restaurant they would be temperature checked uh, and uh, if they are fine then they would be allowed to sit down and, and dine coming on mm -hmm. to the virus checks um the Emirates uh, have their own specific policies. For example, Abu Dhabi, they regularly check uh, food handler staff for COVID tests, and uh, they have to be negative to, to continue to work. Uh, so anyone working in, uh, as a food handler, for example, in Abu Dhabi, has to go through mandatory uh, uh, virus checks, COVID-19 checks on a regular basis to ensure they're not infectious. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Uh Okay, perfect. So uh, sanitizing products available to use for free, and this is because of obviously no one wants to pay for the for the for the sanitizing products. That's why they are asking it. As you can say, you said the very valid point here. This should, this all should be like a hundred. From the business perspective, it is happening hundred percent. But these yeah. are numbers like based on the customer, based on the number of customers that we've asked them. So, so yeah. Uh, going forward. So what, what are the din diner expectation? There are two main uh, points that uh, they are asking. So transparency and clean visibility. So I think, I think here uh, customers, they expect the, the business or the restaurants to be transparent when it comes to cleaning, you know, like hearing what's, what's happening in the front of house or in the back of the house, which is this is because it, they will feel more comfortable. Cleaning visibly is because uh, they want to see uh, the, the, the restaurants or the wait, the wait staff are cleaning uh, after each and uh, every customer. Is this, is this something that, what do you think? Yes, yeah, certainly this is one of the, the basic essentials in terms of uh, food safety as well as uh, infection control uh, with regards to COVID-19. Um, psychologically, if you walk into uh, a restaurant as, as a guest and you see that the restaurant does not look clean, uh, you'd, you'd not stay there for too long. People just turn around and walk out again. Yep. So this is just purely from a psychological perspective that people want to see a clean environment in which they're going to sit down and eat. Uh, coming on to the safety uh, element now, uh, cleaning is designed to remove any source of contamination. And uh, visual cleaning is one thing, but then you've got the uh, assessment of whether it's actually microbially clean or not. And uh, this would ensure that you have to have the right type of chemical sanitization uh, products which will ensure that you have not only clean but also sanitize the surfaces uh, and this again would be an expectation that the customer would want to see regular so, yeah. cleaning uh, tables crockery cutlery uh, chairs all these points where the customer may touch with their hands uh -huh. and, and uh, be a contact point uh, so cleaning is essential uh, both in terms of food safety and also infection control Okay, and what, what, what about like trans, the transparency? Like they said like here, 76% in the US of consumers feel restaurants should offer signage explaining sanitation product. Do you think that they should like be uh, also showing what's happening in back of the house, in the kitchen or only front of the house? Is this something that they really need to show the customer maybe by uh, offering uh, cameras or TV showing what's happening inside or no? What do you think? I, I think perhaps cameras is Perhaps going a bit too far, but uh, I think if, mm -hmm. if a guest wants to see uh, the kitchen operation uh, just to assure themselves, then yes, the, the, the restaurant should not be uh, putting a barrier and perhaps should invite the customers mm -hmm. to go back into the kitchen area and, and ensure that the customer expectations are being met. Um, with regards to cameras, perhaps the cameras can be used to monitor uh, the, the operational team members by management of the operation uh, of the restaurant rather than to make it public and visible to the to the guests at this point. But certainly, um, if you are confident that you have a safe and secure operation, there should be no barriers or any hesitancy on part of the, the business to allow the, the guests to go in and have a look if they want to do so. Exactly. Previously, it was like a lot of restaurants, they won't allow a customer to go into the kitchen. Uh, but I think now, now they, they need to reconsider like not allowing the customer to go inside. I think uh, this will change. Yeah, uh, certainly. Yeah. Another thing is the hand sanitizer. What can you tell us about the hand sanitizer availability? So now we can see it, now it's happening. Do you think that it should be, uh, 
my, the places where, where they should put it, or we, we can see like each restaurant has the hand sanitizer at the door maybe. Do you think that it, it should be like everywhere in the restaurant on each table? What, do you, what can you tell us about the hand sanitizer as well? Uh, certainly uh, from the perspective of, of a guest, they want to make sure that they are safe and secure when they go into any dining outlet uh, for, for a meal. Um, as well as some regulatory requirements, they need to provide uh, a sanitizing solution, hand sanitizing solution at the point of entry. So once they come in uh, at the reception area where they are shown uh, through to by the, by the waiting staff to their table, there should be a sanitizer, hand sanitizer available at the point of entry where they come into the, the restaurant. Then certainly they would need to have or expect to have a hand sanitizer on each table for use by the uh, by the dining guests. And of course, as we see later on, um, other areas where they would need to have hand sanitizers would be the washrooms, for example. And anywhere you have a particular uh, risk of, of cross-contamination with the hands exactly. because the hands are the main source of, of contamination between people as well. So you have to have these uh, hand sanitizers freely available uh, at no extra cost to the guest uh, for use by the guest. That's the, the and the plus definitely uh, trusted brands, right? Because yeah. They, like now consumers, they look at the brand, what type of brand restaurants are using and what they are looking in uh, for in brands uh, to provide them with a safety and security testing times and plus to deliver real value, act responsible and do the right by community including. So, so I think the brand of the sanitizer plays a big role because we can't just put like anything that has a smell of a sanitizer, but it should act and as, as a real uh, uh, bacteria, killer of bacteria. So, so I think, yeah, this is, this is what they, they look at recently because now whenever they do, they, they go and shop for themselves, they look at the brand. What type of brand is this? Uh, this sanitizer or or the cleaning material? So it's like it became now. Uh, it became, I think, uh, uh, an important part of their life to 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 check on that uh, th this type of things. Uh, now, I think we need to take actions. And here you will be telling us what type of actions that uh, we really need to take when it comes. So, uh, starting with the soft training not only staff training, but it is like, it starts with the staff training so we can end up meeting the customer expectation or the needs of the customer so he can uh, dine in safely. Uh, take us through, please. Yeah, I think, uh, David, this is one of the key points. Uh, this is what can make and break a good, um, safe, secure environment. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the staff who are handling the food, uh, who are preparing the food, who are gonna serve the food, these are the, the key people who need to understand the hazards and the risks that are faced uh, in terms of any risk of uh, spreading infectious diseases or even foodborne illness uh, issues that are there within the operation or maybe there within the operation. So training is a key element. Now, we've seen through the pandemic uh, months, the last five, six months, that the, the training has been also focusing on online training. So lots of mm. Businesses have, uh, because of need, uh, have to adapt to online training. Uh, online training is a very useful tool. Uh, first of all, it's, it's much more convenient than coming into a classroom setting where they have to take time out of the operations and, and spend five, six, seven hours in, in a classroom. Uh, whereas with the online training programs, you've got the ability to do training in a much more uh, homely, friendly environment, sitting at home or working in the office. And uh, that will also, the, the atmosphere may enhance the understanding of what you're trying to, to learn or, or to understand with the, with the concepts of food safety and infection control. The, the key element of training is not that, uh, have they done the training? Because uh, at the end of the day, if a, if a person has done some training, they may have some knowledge and they may, they're able to pass an exam and get a certificate. However, the, the certificate itself does not ensure that you have a, a good understanding of the principles. Exactly. Yes, having knowledge, remembering facts is one thing. So training has to be focused on changing behavior, uh, changing the mindset, changing the attitude of, of the participants, uh, people who are going through the training program. So an assessment has to be done on, on how effective the training has been. And we're trying to move away from the traditional uh, multiple choice questions where people sit a, a 30 minute uh, exam at the end of the training tick, session tick the boxes 
and tick boxes. And people who are good at memory, they have good memories, they tend to pass exactly. the exams very easily. Uh, but uh, some people who may not have good memories, but do actually understand the concepts and, and, and what practical training is all about. So we're, we're now talking about developing sort of, um, let's say, online assessments, not just training itself, but online assessment to support the training. And here you've got things like the interactive visual assessments, which we've developed as a company to ensure that people are actually practically understanding the concepts of food safety and not just remembering facts and figures. We all know that five degrees or below is the temperature of a chiller. We all know that cooking temperature should be 75 degrees or above, but practically how do we understand the concepts of bacterial growth or survival? This is something you need to focus on the evaluation aspect. So training is the key. Training is only effective when you have a proper assessment evaluation system to make sure that the people understand the training itself and what the concepts were discussed in that. So exactly. training at all levels, um, food handler training is different from supervisory training. Uh, then you have managers also looking after the operation on, on, at a higher level. So each layer of, of, of hierarchy, for example, would need to have the different levels of training. So mm. we should not just focus on Food handler training, that is essential, but also look at training at the next level or supervisory level, at the managerial level. So training should be part of the culture of the organization, which is going to be benefiting the guest at the end of the day. Exactly. This is, this is really important. Uh, you've mentioned something that it's not only about filling papers and having the certificate. It's about now changing the behavior and, and uh, the implementation of this uh, training. You know, this is, this is the most important. And you guys... As, as a consultant, uh, you are trying to implement the new ways of, uh, of training. So people that, that, uh, that they will, they will uh, go and, and implement what they, what they learn, not only having, having numbers and uh, papers only or certificate to show, right? So you said that you are doing a new, a new ways or, or a new, uh, uh, it's, you it's a new type of training, right? Or no? This, it's a new methodology that we've adapted, and this is called uh, interactive visual assessment, uh, which is okay. part of the evaluation of how successful the training has been. Because if you like, uh, for example, if I, if I ask you a question, what's the temperature of a, a chilled item, you'd say you know, five degrees centigrade, or if it's minus 18 in the case of a frozen mm. item, that's the regulatory requirement, that's your operational requirement as well. But does the person know how to check that temperature in reality? Now, if you, for example, our assessment will, will give you the option, which type of thermometer do you use? Do you use an infrared thermometer? Mm. Do you use a probe thermometer? So the person may know the value that he has to check, but he may not understand which method of checking that he has to, to ensure that is accurate. Is it the surface temperature he's checking? Is it the actual core temperature of the product that he has to check? So all of these elements are only assessed when you're doing a interactive visual assessment. So the person will feel that they are in the environment of the kitchen or the receiving area or the, 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 uh, the service area. So they would do tasks that they would normally do on a practical level in a, uh, an, an interactive visual environment. Perfect, thank you so much. This is really important. So uh, after the staff training, so what, what about the operations? I mean, what changes though on the operation side that they really need to take or to do so they can uh, do the need for, 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 for what's happening. Yeah, I think uh, one of the key focuses of, of safety in terms of uh, away from the food item itself is, is as you've got in the, the slide there, uh, a lot of the restaurants now are going into sort of QR scanning of, of menu items where the, the guest does not actually have to flip over pages of information, which is touched by other guests prior to him arriving on the table. And they're able to choose uh, from the mobile application that they have or, or the QR scanning that they may have, which they choose the items from the, the mobile phone. So they have less uh, touch points of, of, uh, of the menu pads or menu uh, cards, which have to be then, again, challenge of, of sanitizing. Those would be a bigger challenge for the, for the guests, uh, sorry, for the restaurant afterwards. Uh, cashless payments, again, working towards uh, a system where people buy, pay by credit card or by debit card. So again, negating the need to handle cash, uh, whether it is coins or, or notes. Um, the cutlery, crockery, that's, this is always a, a debatable area uh, from the perspective of the restaurant. Uh, in terms of safety, of course, uh, we're trying to ensure and secure safety from infectious disease and also the uh, foodborne illness. 
Uh, mm -hmm. But if, if you're not able to provide disposable cutlery or crockery, then there should be a, a method of sanitization of uh, cutlery and crockery, which is uh, having a rinse temperature using a dishwasher, for example, uh, effectively at, at 80 de 82 degrees centigrade or more as a final rinse to ensure that you have a, a clean and safe uh, uh, cutlery or crockery that you're going to reuse again exactly. for, for your guests. And I think I think the, the disposable cutlery, it, it will be always available for customers that they want. It's like an option for the customer if they want to choose uh, disposable one. So, uh, so yeah, as you, you've mentioned, the uh, dishwashers are really important because of the high temperature and, uh, and the final rinse that they do and all those chemicals that uh, they, we use in the dishwashers. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a key. Now also going forward uh, about the products and the sanitizers, this is basically also falls under the operations. What do you, what do you tell us about here? Yeah, again, um, we need to emphasize the need for uh, accessibility by the guest to sanitizing solutions, the hand sanitizers. And uh, we're living in a world of, of, of brands and reputation, uh, different brands, different companies. So again, the guests will be familiar with what they expect to see. And uh, if they don't see what they expect, then they may ask the question, what, what type of sanitizer do you have? Uh, what is this brand or what is the company? Is it able to satisfy, you know, satisfactorily uh, uh, control the risk of any infection or contamination? So again, it's always advisable to choose a good brand which is reputed and the customer will be familiar with it themselves. That's one of the key things of, of, of uh, hand sanitizers. Uh, where you have uh, queues or customers in terms of fast food restaurants, for example, or people waiting to take a seat in a dining restaurant, uh, again, there should be access to a hand sanitizer at that point. As well as that, you need to provide some information to your guests, uh, which is again, a regulatory requirement uh, regarding the symptoms of COVID-19, mm. the precaution that they should be taking uh, to prevent any infection. So these, uh, this information uh, poster, or sometimes they put banners depending on the size of the, the business to inform the customer of, of what the regulatory requirements are, what are the precautions they need to take. Uh, and again, as the customer leaves the, the restaurant at the point of exit, they need to have, again, uh, a hand sanitizing solution available so they can leave the, the, the restaurant uh, with the hand sanitized and, and go, go back home safely. Exactly. So it's like sanitizer uh, all over the place. Yeah. yeah. Other things like the delivery bags, as you can see here, what measures or what do you, what do you advise them to do with the delivery bags? Because delivery is a big number, as we as we saw, it's 86 percent of their business. Again, the uh, the focus here on on the, the the company who delivers these items, uh, the delivery personnel should be wearing gloves. They should also have uh, access to hand sanitizing solutions. So they should be. Uh, touching the bags only with the gloves on, not with bare hands. Mm -hmm. uh, they should leave on, on knocking on the door when the customer opens the door. They should not again be handing the bag over to the customer, they should leave it at the, at the base of the door so the custom, customer can pick it up themselves. The, the transportation of these bags, uh, uh, whether it's, it's a vehicle or a motorbike, again, the packaging has to be uh, sanitized. Uh, the, 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 the actual uh, carrying element has to be sanitized. So we're talking about maintaining the chain of sanitization. We've often heard about the cold chain in, in mm -hmm. logistics framework of where food has to be transported and the cold chain is maintained. The similar concept is true of, of deliveries where the, the, the sanitization chain has to be maintained. From the time the food leaves the, the production kitchen through to the vehicle, through to the handling, through to the delivery of the food to the guest, you have to maintain the sanitization chain. Okay, that's uh, that's really important. And also uh, maybe like a sachet hand sanitizer or a small sachet of sanitizers, gel that can be also put in a bag uh, of uh, delivery. And definitely as we can see in the washroom. So, uh, so yeah, it's all about the uh, sanitizers. Uh, what about the communication? It's, it's really important. You've mentioned something pre uh, previously about like to communicate, to put things and uh, signage for the <coughs> customer to see uh, about the COVID and, and the symptoms, and even now for how to communicate with, the, with, their, uh, with their customers. It's really important to put uh, all those uh, 
uh, hygiene stickers uh, all over the place so they know what uh, what type of brand they're using and what this brand can do for them. So I think as it's all about to be uh, to be transparent with our customers, use a trusted uh, trusted brand, and communicate uh, clearly uh, on social media, in store in stores, in back of the house, and the WC as as much as we can uh, as we can like put things on walls, stickers, uh, communicate with the, with customers. They will feel comfortable uh, to dine in, and they will trust right the the the, the restaurant. Yes, more. certainly. It's it's all about constant reinforcement. What you have is a message which is coming out uh, wherever you look. If you go into a restaurant, if you go look in social media, you go into retail stores. Uh, what you're seeing around you is information which reinforces the precaution you need to take when you are shopping outside or dining in in a restaurant. Hand washing, focusing on the sanitization of hands and cleaning of hands wearing a mask, uh, wearing gloves. So all of these are, again, reinforcement of, of what has to be done on a, on a daily basis. Sometimes people begin to get relaxed. Uh, they, they don't feel that there's a, an issue anymore. But uh, uh, as you and I were discussing earlier on, what we are seeing is a, is a gradual increase in COVID-19 cases uh, over the last uh, month or so. So we should not relax. We, we have to understand the pandemic is still with us. Uh, it may be with us for quite some time. And uh, yeah. unless we continue to be careful uh, with the basic simple things like washing hands and wearing a mask, uh, that will go a long way to protect yourself and, and, uh, and your fellow people around you. Exactly. So uh, now I think, I think we've covered uh, everything. So we've covered all the insights, we've covered all, uh, you guys can, you, you saw everything and then the action. So these are like simple action, most of them, most of us, we are doing the same, but we really need to uh, make it more visible and clear uh, to the customers. And definitely using trusted brands. And because of that, we have uh, LiveWall, as you know, is the first, uh, the world's first uh, trusted brand for hand sanitizer, soaps, and uh, a lot of other things. Uh, we have a big range. So if you guys, we would be more than happy to support you. And uh, if you would like to contact us, uh, uh, our sales team is more than happy to show you the, the full range of uh, Life Boy to help you in your operation, uh, and uh, and because definitely, as I said, it is a number one trusted brand. So I think, Mr. Abdul Rashid, is anything you want to add before jumping into Q and A box to see what are the questions that are popping up? Is there anything you want? Any advi other advices you would like to share with the with the audience out there? Yeah, certainly. I think it's just, just want to reinforce again what I just mentioned before is that uh, sometimes it's a simple thing that makes a difference. So we're not talking about rocket science here in terms of prevention and control. Uh, we leave the, the, the development of the, the vaccine and, and these elements to the scientists working away in laboratories to, to, to see what they can achieve. But our role as, as consumers, whether we are a, a, a diner, whether we are a, 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 a consultancy company providing support to the businesses, it's it's the basics that we need to focus on. It's it's ensuring that we mm -hmm. wash our hands regularly. It's ensuring that we follow the regulatory requirements as a business to ensure that our diners are not comp the safety of our diners is not compromised. Uh, ensuring that uh, the expectations of the diners are met all the time through proper cleaning, providing mm -hmm. sanitization chemicals ensuring that the touch points that we uh, have in our business in terms of washrooms, in terms of escalators, in terms of buttons on lifts, uh, in terms of shopping trolleys. So all of these are the responsibility of the business to ensure that they provide the basic exactly. cleaning and sanitization. And then from the perspective of the customer, you know, ensuring that they abide by the rules, uh, not letting your guard down, so to speak, to ensure that they're able to manage the simple things like washing hands, wearing masks, and following the procedures which are there to secure their safety. And that's what the business is trying to achieve at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So uh, thank you so much, Mr. Abdul Rashid. I have a question, and I think this is, this is something we, you, can, uh, you can share also with us. Can I have more information on interactive assessment? So uh, yeah, so I think... Uh, I'm yes, sure that a, lot of, we, a lot of people out there, they want to know more about this interactive, interactive, interactive assessment that you guys, uh, you shared yeah, this with is, us. This is, um, this is something that we've worked on for quite some time and we've uh, come to a point where now it's actually, it's a web-based uh, assessment tool. 
and uh, anyone can access this by registering themselves on our web web base uh, web web page. Sorry, if I can maybe give out the web base. Uh, sorry, web page. Sure. Uh, it's uh, www. Dot e test e t e s t. Pulsbury p u l s e b e w r y. Dot com. E test Pulsbury. Dot mm -hmm. That is the web web based web page that you can go in and have a look and, and try your knowledge on food safety uh, using our interactive visual assessment. Okay, perfect. Uh, someone is asking, where can we get the raw data from the states uh, st st stats you shared? Uh, those data are made uh, from the Unilever Global team and the research for lo local data. So uh, so I think, I think uh, Mr. Abdul Rashid, uh, it's good because we still have a little bit of more time. It's good if you can share with us what can you guys, as as a consultant, how can you, uh, what can you offer for the for the for the restaurant and businesses? If you can share with us, we would be more yes, than happy. Certainly. Especially especially uh, on those uh, things that are like advanced when it comes to training. After the training, what needs to be done? All those stuff. And what services that you guys can. Uh, Yes. What we've done as, a, as an organization, Palsbury Health Consultants, we've put together a COVID-19 protocol, which ensures that the restaurants, if they follow that protocol from the time that the food is received all the way to the customer service, that will ensure that they have adequate controls in place, uh, not only for food safety, but also for COVID-19. So we have a set of procedures which have been tried and tested. We can uh, support the implementation of these with our consultants that we are having within our team. And uh, the, the, the outcome of that will provide you assurance and a peace of mind for the business to uh, understand that they've done their best by implementing the such protocols. They not only comply with legal standards, but also uh, are away a, a slightly higher level of, of compliance with regards to customer expectations as well. Uh -huh. Perfect. Uh... Can you tell me more about the live boy range that is available? Uh, yeah, you can, you can, uh, we will be more than happy if you can contact our sales team and on our website. I think it's, it's all, it's all in there. Uh, we would, we would be more than happy to help you out and, and, and uh, share with you all the range that we have. So uh, I hope I answered your question. Okay. Which advice would you give to hotels who want to restart the buffet? Someone is asking Mr. Abdul Rashid. So which advice would you give to hotels who want to restart buffet, which is like the open buffets? Any advice? Yeah, I think the first advice to give would be to ask the question, is it uh, <laughs> acceptable by the local authorities? Because the last thing that you want to do is start something which is not complying with the legal requirements. So uh, still at present, the uh, some of the local authorities are not allowing the buffets to open up. Uh, so that is the first compliance requirement. Check with the local authority, whether it is uh, municipality or the ministry, whichever country that you're based in, is that do they allow buffets to, uh, to serve food? If yes, then you look at the options of how do you minimize any risk of uh, foodborne illness or, or infection, uh, infectious disease spread like COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, for this to happen, you need to really just do a, 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 a gap assessment. Uh, we would need to look at your operation to understand how you're going to work uh, to ensure that you are complying with all the regulatory requirements and, and also the operational requirements in terms of the business operation. Uh, we would highlight some of the areas that maybe are different to what we would normally suggest for food safety that needs to be focused on in terms of COVID-19. Uh, for example, uh, a practical example, perhaps the staff uh, can serve the food uh, and the guest would just point to the point to the food that they want to be served onto their plate. So instead of the, allowing the guest to handle uh, cutlery and, and take things from the chefing dish, for example, uh, you'd have a member of the staff uh, waiting in that buffet area and the, the, the guest would ask them to put, for example, roast beef or, or potatoes, wherever it may be, yeah, exactly. onto the plate, and that would be served by the member of the of the of the hotel staff. So I think that the in a short summary answer, first of all, ensure that you are able to open uh, legally. Uh, secondly, uh, ask somebody who knows about food safety to come and do an gap assessment and understand the operation that you have, and then they will advise you on how that how best to put into practice 
to minimize any risk of contamination with regards to food safety or for infectious disease. Perfect. Thank you so much. Really uh, fruitful. Anyway, uh, I think we have another question. How branded sanitizer life? No. How can you convince? How can you convince the fine dining restaurants to keep our life boy, or to keep life boy uh, on the dining tables? So I think life boy is a trusted uh, trusted brand. So basically, it is a trusted brand. So it's a high end high end brand. So. Uh, it's not anymore. It's not anymore because it's a fine dining or casual dining or a fast food. It's all about the safety of the customers. So uh, I think the business or the owner or the chef or the manager should be convinced without any any push. You know, like this is this is all about the safety of the of the of his customers. So it's not about like being a fine dining or not fine dining. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Because someone is asking how can we convince in fine dining restaurant to put a live boy on on the table. So I think it's not anymore about like being uh, fine dining or not fine dining. First of all, you're using a Lifebuoy brand, which is a trusted brand. Okay. And then uh, it's the safety of the customers at the end of the day, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, how a brand sanitizer can play a better, how a brand sanitizer can play, uh, Lifebuoy can play a better role versus local brand of money, customers with local brand to save money. Again, any any questions, any anything you guys want to know about Lifebuoy, we can we can take this uh, offline and we can visit you uh, to your restaurant uh, or to your kitchen to explain the, the full range of Lifebuoy, how how Lifebuoy, how you can uh, benefit from using it in house. Uh, I mean, for dining in or for the delivery. Uh, I think that's it for now we are right on time so uh, mr abdul rashid uh, i think we're done thank you so much again for uh, for the fruitful informations and uh, you've shared with us uh, again and again uh, i would like to uh, uh, thank you again and then uh, if anything you want to uh, to add let me know we still have an, another couple of minutes but uh, i'm okay for that for for now is there anything you want to add no, that's all. Uh, I think it's uh, it's a good opportunity, and as, as always, it's always good to have a an interactive session where people can clarify uh, information and ask questions uh, of of people who have some uh, experience and knowledge about uh, food safety and also the, the restaurant business operations. I, I've taken the opportunity to put the uh, the web page uh, information on on that uh, chat room. So if anybody wants to look at that. Uh, please feel free to do so. It's on the chat room for all the attendees to have a look at. And Perfect. as always, I think uh, this type of uh, webinar provides an opportunity to ensure that people are fully up to date with what's required and what is good practice. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thank you guys uh, for uh, joining today. And uh, hopefully we will uh, meet again in, uh, in another uh, webinar that has to do with safety uh, other things. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Have a good night.